So, uh, Andrew, you're on the line with Jimmy and Matt. Last week you called to tell me that I was forgiven for something I didn't ask forgiveness wow. for and something that you couldn't speak on behalf of. This week you have called in with a question directed at Matt. Is that because, since the question actually applies to the both of us, have you isolated it to just Matt because you know if you try and talk to me it ain't going to go so well? <laughs> no, no. I just I had Matt in mind because he um, was talking smack like in the chat when I was on with uh, Godless Engineer. But I'll talk to both of you. Great. Um, go ahead. I was talking smack in the chat when you were on with Godless Engineer. Um Oh wait, you called in when when um when he was on with Josh? Um yeah. what smack did what smack did I talk? You're saying that I invented my own God that progressive Christians invent their own God. Well, some do, but Based. I my my argument was essentially that yes, the way you described it is you have been invented your own God. Well, how is that smack talk? How is me assessing your argument and finding a flaw in it? How is that smack talk? Christians will find persecution anywhere. Yeah. You're not being persecuted. You're just wrong. I didn't say persecution. Yes, you okay. didn't use that exact word. So I have beef with anyone who advocates for a position that they can't justify. And so if you compare your version of the Christian God to, let's say, Westboro Baptist Church's version of the Christian God, Theirs is more biblically sound than yours. I think you would agree with that, right? Biblically sound? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So instead yeah. of relying on the Bible, what are you relying on for your understanding of God? The Bible, all religions, secularism, nature, everything we have our hands on. Okay. So the Bible, religion, secularism, nature— there's nothing about nature that has any information discernible about God. There's nothing about secularism that has anything discernible about God. Um, you've already said that you're not as in accordance with the Bible as, as others are. When What you said during the call was that when you had to try to figure out that the whole goal was to try to figure out who God was, what God wants, etc., and that you relied on whether or not you found uh, the God ideas appealing. That is, by definition, you being the foundation of determination. Your mind determines which things are of God and which things are not of God. De uh, determining is, uh, is not the word I would use. It's the word I use. Because it's accurate. This is the official when, God. When there's, a position, when there's a position and somebody says, how do you tell whether something in the Bible is actually from God, or if it's something that the Hebrews got wrong, your answer was that you rely on whether or not you're willing to accept it, that your mind is the criteria that you use to determine whether or not the Bible's view on slavery is the ancient Hebrews getting it wrong or God, and you don't think it's God. Correct. Yeah, and you don't think it's God, not because of nature, not because of secularism, not because of any of the other things you listed, and not because of the Bible. You don't think it's God because you have a personal idea of God that is inconsistent with what that passage says. Yes, that is true. That is you inventing, me, that is you inventing your own God. How dare you accuse me of misrepresenting you? I, inventing? Um, I think that's a leap. I, I think that's not it. I don't think. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think. I didn't out. care what you thought about God. I don't care what you think about my assessment of you. From a biblical standpoint, you are not a biblically based Christian. You are a personal Christian. You are relying on your own understanding, which the Bible condemns. <laughs> okay. Hey, are uh, you on speakerphone? Yeah, Why are your birds as loud as you? I'm outside. I have AirPods. Okay. Cool. It's just so now we've explained what I have beef with and what I don't. What's the point? Yeah. The majority of the world is nowhere near becoming atheist. 
we're better off. I don't care. Crazy Christian. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, don't, I don't care the whether whether or not you think the majority of the world is 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 uh, and soon to become atheist or not. How is that relevant to anything we're discussing? By the way, Andrew, if the, the, as an argument, one, you don't know if it's not, and two, whether or not we would still work to dismantle progressive theism does not mean we would suggest that there isn't a useful utility in a person's ability to deconstruct for there to be a progressive step along the way. I happen to think that that is an overblown thing, that most people uh, don't need the progressive step, and that usually the progressive step isn't a method of transition, but a method of basically keeping uh, people and internal conflict happy and wanting to still be Christian despite not really being Christian. But what you, as an argument, that that meant nothing. Whether or not I would still take a progressive Christian and try to uh, apply skepticism and see if I can deconstruct them even from progressive Christianity does not mean that I also think progressive Christianity has no use or that I wish it would just disappear at the same level of priority and quickness as everything else. Sure. Sure, you're wrong. Is the, I mean, the, the honest sentence would have been, sure, I'm wrong on, on my argument. Yeah, my just beef... like you called in to say, what's my beef with progressive Christianity? And then when it turns out... Um, I was not in any way misrepresenting your view. You give up and move on to say the world's not ready to become atheistic yet, which has nothing to do with why you called or what we were discussing. Um, I don't value your opinion because I don't find you to be a reasonable person. I've got a question for you, Andrew. Foundationally, does progressive Christianity still advocate for a world in which people may accept something as true on the basis of faith or not faith is part of the ultimate yes or no the, you're saying yes but you're yes. trying to yes. okay yes. that's okay. my yes. beef with christianity it is still advocating for a foundation which even progressive christians seem to agree has never been demonstrated to actually get you to truth and so then we get to a conflict where if you say i believe in progressive christianity and it doesn't harm anybody, so isn't that great? And then I say, right, but upon what basis do you believe in it? And you say, I have faith. And then somebody says, I'm not a progressive Christianity, and I believe you, Jimmy, you queer asshole, should die. And I say, upon what basis? I have faith. How does the progressive Christian appealing to truth tell the non-progressive Christian that their way is wrong? Faith is not the be-all, end-all. It's just part of the way humans interpret the world. And okay, so, so what? what no, 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 faith, that's fine. It's, it's damaging. Hang on, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. I'm going to agree with you, but we're going to get to the actual answer to my question. Okay, fine. You're saying it's not just faith. What is the second thing that you can point to with that non-progressive Christian and say, okay, yes, we both have faith, but the thing that makes your faith untrue and mine true or could still be true is what? We, we see progress in, re, in, your, in religion, in your religion, religious traditions. There is progress throughout the century. Progress so toward what? Believe, you're, just using this progress. As, you're just using this as a powerful word, but it's meaningless. Whether or not something is true or not is not dependent upon whether or not it has changed. In a way, you would call progress, but it, a, a, a state of change does not indicate truth or non-truth, just as usually when I have this argument with people, whether or not a belief is harmful does not speak to whether it is true or not, though some beliefs are harmful because they are untrue. Um, okay, I'm a little lost now. I bet. there is. If you say foundationally it is acceptable for me to believe something on faith, you have no way to say to a person who believes something harmful based on faith that their faith-based belief is wrong. If you say faith is an okay way, an okay foundation, then their foundation is okay. And if they say the only reason, they might even tell you, by the way, I was this kind of Mormon. I love queer people. I just hate their sin. I love queer people, but the government should interfere with them and at least put them in prison. Okay. 
If I could literally say it is only my faith that tells me that that is true, no other thing. Your belief system says faith is an acceptable method by which to either accept something is true or get to some uh, 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 conclude that something is true. How do you tell that person, a very real person who existed in my past and exists all over the place, that their foundation and that their belief is wrong or untrue with the same foundation as yours? I would show them, I would go to their holy text, and I would show them that there are countless passages, hundreds, that they don't accept to be, they don't literally apply to their lives. Uh -huh. That nobody follows all of these passages absolutely. Great. So they're not basing their... Andrew, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Only on faith. Let's just do it. I'm no longer Jimmy Snow. I am Elder Snow. I am an ex more or I'm a Mormon. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you it is on faith that I, when I read the scriptures... I realize that queer people need to be punished and put away for their queerness. How would you respond to that, Andrew? I, I can, I, I don't know. I'm not a progressive Mormon. I cannot help you with that. I'm not, a, I'm not I, representing a progressive Mormon. You just said you would take a non-progressive person and take them to the scriptures. We'll just go with the Bible. I won't appeal to the Book of Mormon at all. You know the Bible. We'll just go with the Bible. Tell me my, I tell you my biblical view when I read the Bible is that we must punish the queer people. And you said your response would be to look at the Bible and their scripture and show them, show me passages that I don't believe and show that there are ones I don't believe. I already know. Do you want me to just skip to what my response as the religious person is? Well, if you're asking me, um, I will show them that it says to stone your children and you guys and the most fundamentalist Mormons do not stone their children. So you don't take the Bible literally. That's what I would tell them. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and so I have prayed on this, and I've had a confirmation of faith, and I have had my faith affirmed, and I have faith that it was God who affirmed it, that the no longer stoning your children law makes sense specifically for our secular country. However, perhaps in a Christian, actual Christian country, we would reconsider it. But for where we are today, I have had an affirmation, faith-based from God, that we should reinstate those punishments— for queerness while not doing because of my personal relationship with God and the uh, uh, my faith that he is guiding me to know which parts of the scripture are him and which one came about because of the imperfections of man. Nobody follows crazies like that. Yes, they That's do. Yes, they fucking do. Yes, they fucking do. They are the most popular religions in the world. Catholicism has that level of insanity when it comes to gay marriage and abortion rights and in that level of insanity when it comes to the way they vote in clusters. Mormonism may be the richest, but and yet it, if, even if it's not, it's close to the richest institution in the world, certainly re religious institution, even though it has less membership, competes and therefore has tremendous political power, has been able to turn Utah into a basically a theocratic state and be able to shift policy and affect the people who live there. I have a sister who's getting a divorce and the judge's clear problem with uh, queer appearing people who are uh, have a sexually liberated life is literally causing her barriers. So you want to sit there and pretend that this is the kooky thing. This is the normal thing. You're the kooky thing to religious people, not yeah. the other way around. But what I, you had said that you, when, when you came up against a religious person where there was some disagreement, you would go to their scripture and show them. But when Jimmy mentioned the Mormonism thing, you don't know Mormon scripture, so you can't use that. What would you do if you, I don't know if you saw the debate last night, but what would you do if you were up with against a Sharia law advocating Muslim like I was last night? How do you convince him? Do you know anything about the Quran? And and are you saying that that his beliefs aren't bad shit crazy in the way you just denied others are? I would show them how bad shit crazy his beliefs are, according to most Muslims. Most Muslims do not even think about beating their wives. He would not be his wife. Um, and the Quran says to beat your wife. So he's denying that passage. I would show Daniel Pikachu that the no, Quran no. says to beat your wife, and you don't believe that. You don't think that Daniel knows the Quran says that, and you don't think that Daniel would actually beat his wife, the guy who literally said that it would be a, a perfectly acceptable portion of law for me to be killed for mocking the prophet? You don't think Daniel would beat his wife? I guarantee you he'd beat his wife. 
he, 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 will, he does not move to Muslim-majority countries. If he was a real Muslim, he will go to a Muslim-majority country. Okay. He wouldn't stay here under the protection Whatever. of the West. What, uh, whatever, Andrew, Andrew, you are monumentally naive. You've made up your own God and you've made up your own reality now as well. Because if you're suggesting that the guy that I debated last night isn't a real Muslim, cool. You go debate him and you go tell him to his face that he's not a real Muslim and because he isn't in a Muslim majority country. That's the stupidest thing you've said today, that he's not a real Muslim because he doesn't live in a Muslim. You, you can doubt him, but your hashtag no true Scotsman fallacy is bullshit. You have no idea what you're talking about when it comes to other religions, let alone your own. By the way, Andrew, uh, you said something that is false. Uh, I believe it is the interview between Barack Obama and Christine Amanpour that happened recently and his institution where they had multiple women from Muslim countries and Muslim majority countries. And they actually showed statistics that show that most of the Muslim world does, in fact, believe in corporal punishment for wives. They're, they're people throwing acid in faces for honor, for dishonor things. Um, there are the female genital mutilation. These people are, are ab advocating for raping and marrying nine-year-olds. And you're going to sit here and suggest that this guy's not a real Muslim. You're an idiot. I'm saying he picks and chooses like most Muslims do. They don't follow everything to the T. You, you're really bad I, at this. I, I'm saying Sorry, you pick and choose and you're an idiot. The guy you're talking about doesn't pick and choose. You're saying he and you have this confidence and it reminds me of my own dad. And in a way, it's making me feel worse for you and less angry because it's clearly just your ignorance. When my dad and I had a conversation early on about uh, Mormonism he was surprised to find out or actually just thought I was lying when I said most people in Christian religions, all of them, not just Mormonism, teach about having a personal relationship with God, which he at first just denied. Somehow it lived something like 60 years on this earth and met thousands of Christians and yet didn't believe that other churches taught you could have a personal relationship with God. He thought it was all, basically everybody was having their relationship with always the Catholic priest in the way, that there was no praying and getting direct revelation or a Holy Spirit, that it was all through these authorities. And it was this moment that I had where I was like, oh my God, you just don't know. You have somehow missed what the rest of the world is like. And you just sat here and talking to me and in your response to me revealed that you think progressive Christianity is more popular than moderate or fundamentalist combined. That's insane, no, sir. Not by number. I didn't say by number. I said most Christians are heavily influenced by modernity. They, so most religious people are more secular than they are religious. And, and yeah. we were just talking about one specific Muslim that is one of the most extreme Muslims. It's and just, it's just hilarious. It's just hilarious that people. after denying, after denying, you were talking about the popularity of it. You said the word most three fucking times. Yeah, and you're wrong. Okay, then maybe I misspoke. Or you're wrong. You misspoke three fucking times. Right. Yeah. Right after. Andrew, and you misspoke I, when you suggested that Daniel isn't a real Muslim who wouldn't beat his wife. I'm, I'm really sitting here going. The contempt I had arguing with you earlier has actually gone away because I'm sitting here going, there isn't anything Matt and I now can do to change your mind because you won't accept what we say when we say you're wrong about this. This is more true. More people believe this. This is the default. We literally live in America. The most arguably, I mean, not most, but we have a secular constitution and yet people are working against that and literally turning back rights in a very non-secular way, and now going after new ones, not just abortion that they already did, but now a federal ban on abortion. Not just that, but also maybe we should re, re uh, assess this whole gay marriage thing. And and I guess you think that it is done in closed doors, uh, in closed rooms with like 20 or 30 people. I don't know how you live in the world we actually live in and think that most people are more secular than they are religious, unless you're just counting Every mundane thing is secular. Today I woke up and had a peanut butter sandwich. That was a secular lunch. Unless you're doing something as silly as that, I don't know how, what percentage, let's just go with this. What percentage 
of the U.S. do you believe votes in a way that they wouldn't vote unless if they weren't the religion they are? That was that was worded really confusing. I didn't follow it. All right, so let me try and rewrite. I don't. It. I don't have a number. I'm not going to have a number for that. Well, what would you guess? Do you think it's more? It would just be my opinion. Right. Um, Let's just take. Okay. Here's the group of people. You have a hundred religious people. They represent the entire U.S. How many of those hundred people do you suspect have cast a vote that, if they were not their religion, would have been different? Um. I, I don't have data in front of me. I, I, I I'm just numbers. asking you your suspicion. Just just what you suspect that that number is. To, to be to be fair, Andrew, I have no idea what number I would put on it. So, yeah, I, it's so complex because some people might be voting what they think is religious, but it's not. I don't know. That's a well. The, the a other option. Question, the other option is that people are part of a particular religion that already agrees with them, much like you are. See, you think that God agrees with your concept of God. You are, like Daniel Hakikachu from last night, relying on intuition. Yeah, I, I actually think that you can, if you go out, and I, I'm not at, this is why I was saying what your suspicion is. If you go out, because I don't have the exact number, but I would say I've consumed enough data. I have, I, I have researched enough into the topic to confidently say that it's more than half. Because you can look at the differences in demographics you know, if, if you have the same vote and people who are non-religious vote one way and people who are one religion tend to vote another way and people who are a different religion tend to vote another way, you can say definitively that there is a religious influence to their vote. Uh, and if you collect enough of that, you can get a, a again, I wasn't ever asking you to get it right. I wasn't it wasn't a trick question where it was like, ah, ha, ha. I just wondered if you even thought it was more than half, honestly. Uh, and OK, it, it could I think be I can give more. a number. I think I could give a number. Sure. Since so you clarified that. Well, now now I clarified America, and gave information, and you might just try it. But go ahead. In America, it's probably 60%. But even those 60%, their religion is so like influenced by secular values that they think it's their religious ideas. But I think it's around maybe 60. I hope you're right, except for that the votes that they're casting, which are different— the secular the, the secular valued votes would be different but i hope you're right i hope that secular humanism specifically because they're you know you could have a secular anti-humanism i suppose is tricking religions into updating or not tricking but are, are compelling and convincing uh i hope you're right that that's true however if the votes are still different that means it is where that is failing where the appeal of some sort of some sort of thing like secular humanism comes in is not overwhelming their religious instinct or their feeling of religious duty. And that's the problem. And it still happens. Again, my problem with progressive Christians, because we probably vote almost the in, entirely the same way or close, because on top of, you know, they're often very left wing. I'm I'm much further left than liberals are, uh, but close enough. And in a way that I don't feel resentment. My biggest problem is their foundational defense. I cannot allow a person to say it is fine to uh, uh, believe something based on faith if that foundation can be used to believe in something terrible without demonstration. It's really as simple as that. But I have a question. Andrew, progressive Christian, moderate Christian, whatever the category is, what objectively verifiable evidence has been presented to show that any version of Christianity is true. Um, <clears throat> historical evidence that Christian religion has so much of an influence and a popularity on, hum on humankind, that the fact that it's influenced um, millions of people throughout the centuries, it's just it, it touches on universal human themes and hu universal human secondary values. So, or else it wouldn't have been so popular. So, so I asked you for objectively verifiable evidence that Christianity is true, and what you gave me was an argumentum ad populum. 
I think he misheard the question because a... that that was so far. I mean, you literally presented a logical fallacy, not objectively verifiable evidence. What objectively verifiable evidence has been presented to show that any version of Christianity is true? Oh, I, I already tried the first time. I'm probably not understanding it, or I don't have any objective, verifiable evidence. Just so religion. I'm just appealing why, to religious experience. Why, why on earth would you believe that something is true if you don't have evidence that it's true? Are you just going on intuition the way Daniel was advocating last night? Not just intuition. Religious experience itself. You know, when religious experience I have religious, religious experiences re, okay list one religious experience that you think testifies to the truth of christianity christianity being one of the truths i just religious experience when i when i take the eucharist um at a mass it, i feel an overwhelming presence you're Catholic? You don't remember? So you're a progressive Christian who supports a criminal organization, and your evidence is that when you take the Eucharist, you feel something, therefore Christianity is true. And you don't see that that's logically flawed? I didn't present a logical argument. I'm, logic I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Truth, I'm sorry. I'm shut up. When I ask you for a reason and you give a reason and I say it's logically flawed, you, it's not a response to say I didn't present a logical argument. I asked you for the reason, the evidence that you have that Christianity is true. You presented a logical fallacy and an argument to mad populum to begin with, and then the next one you you appealed to personal uh, feeling, but your personal feeling doesn't in any way demonstrate that Christianity is true, because you could have that feeling even if Christianity is not true, correct? Yes. Yes. So you admit you don't, do you have any good reason to believe what you believe? I presented two. But no, it, sir, you have not, not presented any, no, so. sir, no, sir, you have not presented any good reason. You presented a fallacy and an appeal to emotion, which is another fallacy. Do yeah. you have a non-fallacious reason that you think Christianity is true? Thanks for nothing. Well, I, I think he's just thinking and can't come up with one. Andrew, I have a few. Of course, he can't come up with one. I have a few very, uh, very quick final questions. You are, first of all, it is true that you are a Catholic, yes? Yes. You also consider yourself a progressive Christian, or you're just advocating for them? No, I consider myself a progressive Catholic. Okay. When the prog oh, progressive Catholic is a bit different than progressive Christian. If a vote on a federal ban on abortion were to happen, church. would you vote for the federal abortion? I would want to take abortion. I, I, I would I, I would not want to make my religion legal. I, I, I would not want to use the law to enforce if my, the, uh, my views on abortion. If the Catholic Church indicated as the, and, and usually they have to be careful in the way they uh, uh, do the language, but they did this as, as, as well as the Catholic Church back during the Prop 8 days. If they indicated that it was important that you vote on this issue, and then in the same words, in the same breath, said things like, we must protect the right to life, if it was a clear message from the Catholic Church that they were asking their membership to vote against, or sorry, vote in favor of a federal ban, would you then do so? If directed by the Pope, I would have to as a Catholic. <laughs> so, and sir, you think you're a rational person because I, the Pope tells you to do something. You have to. 
Thanks for throwing your freedom and humanity in the fucking toilet. Earlier, we did an experiment where I asked you about whether or not there are people who will vote their religion uh, basically against their conscience, against how they would actually vote were it not for that religion. And you had skepticism that that would be the case and have just confirmed that you are one you such are one. Catholic that would do so or one such progressive Christian. And so now, to put very simply and then give you, let's say, 15 seconds to end the call, my final words to you are, that's the beef I have with progressive Christianity. Andrew, 15 more seconds and then it's we're moving on. Um, no, I, I, I appreciate many, uh, I appreciate secular humanism, and I think we're just better off reforming religion to be more secular, more humanist. I don't give a shit what you think. You'll, you'll do whatever the Pope tells you. You have no good understanding of reality. You have no good reason for your belief. I don't care if you, if you pay lip service to secular humanism. If you were in, truly in favor of secular humanism, you would not blindly follow what the fucking Pope says, and you would care whether or not your beliefs are true and whether you not have good reasons. You are not honest. You are lying to yourself about who you are and what you believe. Yeah. I hope you sit with what just happened and really think about it. We're moving on. Thanks, Andrew. Okay. Bye-bye. See ya. Maybe he'll forgive me, too. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just bizarre to me that somebody can call in and act like, oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm better than those. Why, why would you have a problem with progressive Christians? Because you don't have a leg to stand on. You don't have a theological leg to stand on. And whether you had a theological leg or not, you don't have a logical, you don't have a logical or a theological leg to stand on. And when push comes to shove, he did exactly what he suggested people would do. The hypocrisy is amazing. Hello, I'm Jimmy Snow, Pokemon master and executive producer on the line. Would you like to support a specific show on the line or the line in general? There are special tiers on our Patreon and in our channel memberships. You can do just that. By the way, you could consider leaving a super thanks down below. You could also like, subscribe and leave a regular comment. All of these are great. Now, I'm going to get back to crushing loneliness, but while I do that, why don't you check out one of these?